Yo guys, welcome to the video. This is Josh or Milky and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the strategy that I ran today and it was Delirium. I wanted to try use some more cheap scarabs to see if we could find a good strategy with how the scarabs are. There are some scarabs that are very underutilized and this is actually a strat I wanted to try earlier in the league, but I understand why it was more expensive then. It's Delirium Scarab of Paranoia. And essentially what that does is it means that the Delirium encounters in the area generate two additional reward types. So at the bottom left, you'll see the rewards pop up when you do Delirium. This just adds two to that. And what that means is you're going to get a lot of Delirium orbs, a lot of Cluster Jewels. Uh, but Cluster Jewels are really not that expensive right now because of this Scarab. This was farmed very much early on. It's good in T17s. Well, a version of this is good in T17s. So Cluster Jewels are very, very saturated and not all that expensive. Deli Orbs also not that crazy, but they go for about 28 to 1 in bulk, which isn't too bad. But I didn't want that to deter me because we can do these maps exceptionally fast. What I wanted to do was run a strategy where we do a strand, which is a very good map for any delirium strategy, and we do it fast. So we want to reach as high amount of delirium orb count in the shortest amount of time. So I wanted to find that sweet spot of not juicing our maps too much with things like Abyss or anything like that. So... We ended up using four Delirium Scarabs of Paranoia. I tested out different setups with the Beyond Scarab Invasion to see if this gave a lot of Delirium progress. And I tested uh, differing amounts of Mania Scarabs, but one ended up being the sweet spot. So one Mania, four Paranoias. And what this is going to mean, and you'll see it in the showcase I do in a second, is we get to eight reward tiles before killing the boss. That's the goal. We want to get to eight reward tiles as quickly as possible without slowing down to do any Abyss, any Alva, any Blight or anything like that. We just want to get in, proc these reward tiles, and get out and go again because it generates quite a decent amount of loot. The reward tiles themselves are fairly rewarding. You're going to get a lot of currency, a lot of cards, maps, stack decks were a big one that we got. And also whilst running Strand, it does have the Fortress as its T17 drop. So you are going to drop a few fortresses if you run a decent amount of these maps i personally ran 50 as is the like standard that i set uh, for the videos so 50 of these maps is what i ran the maps did not take long at all they're like two to three minutes so you can do this very very quickly which the profits could skyrocket depending on how fast you are but the reason we want to get to eight rewards is because then when we kill the boss at the end we get pumped up all the way to nine which means we're going to have nine reward tiles on most of our deli, and then the last two are going to be a bit lower. So we end up going to Imagine Pursuits. We also have a lot of map effects, blue altars, because blue altars at this stage in the league, for me, at least if you're doing a fast trap, are very, very good. You've got that chance for a divine altar. The divination card rewards are very good. You can get ones that reward other divination cards. You're going to see things like patient, nurse, uh, brush and ink, or whatever it's called, the, the enhanced one. There are some good cards in there, and you're going to get it quite frequently. You've got things like divination cards that reward currency. You're going to get divine beauties, fortunates, maybe even like a seven years bad luck. I've seen one myself. Uh, you can definitely get them. And as I said, the divine orb altars as well. So blue does add a lot of juice outside of those things. I'm typically just pressing the player altars to get the quantum rarity or the chance to do map stuff like that. Then we had some scarab chances. These scarabs are just uh, the most valuable right now. So I do like to throw that in on most strats, especially with the number of rares that delirium and beyond do add. So with Amplified Artifacts, then we come on down to the Shrines. And the Shrines was something I added after testing because I wasn't quite getting to the 8 reward mark. And these Shrines just tipped me over the edge. So you want to use an 8 mod map with this tree. And more often than not, I'd say at least 9 out of 10 times, you're going to get to 8 rewards before you kill the boss. And then killing the boss will pump you up to 9. So we also used uh, Delirium. Obviously, we've got all the Delirium nodes. This node right here, Descent into Madness, causes Delirium in your maps to increase 50% faster. This means it gets harder, uh, but you also get more juice. So very nice. Uh, then we have Compulsive Hoarder, 8% chance to generate three additional reward types. This is obviously on top of the guaranteed two from each of the Scarabs. So you could have a very, like the bar could take up most of the screen if you end up procking this, as we did a few times. And then Endless uh, Tide for the Never Ending Beyond which is, again is just there to add more juice in terms of monsters to fill up the delirium tiles. And then I just picked up a few scarab nodes at the end so that we were dropping more of our favorable scarabs. So that's the tree. There are some things that we can talk about in terms of what I would have liked to add but don't have the room for. Maybe you can find a way to squeeze it in. And that is obviously delusions of persecution and paranoid fixation. I wouldn't say this is great for farming uh, unique cluster jewels, but 
Kosis, Omniphobia, and all that can drop insane cats, which is the corrupted mage blood card. So maybe you could think about adding this in, but they are gonna add a little bit of time to your map, and it's obviously quite unlikely you're gonna drop them. But something to think about if you try this out, you could maybe try adding in the bosses. Uh, but I think the tree is pretty well refined at this point from what I tested uh, and just gets us to where we need to be. Uh, so yeah, that's it. We'll go in and we'll show a map. The map of choice is a strand. That's because it has a very good um, beyond coefficient. Uh, it's been shown that certain maps have certain coefficients for how much delirium progress you get based on the number of mobs they have in the map or some backend stuff that we don't really know. But what we do know is strand is good for delirium. So we're going to do strand and we are going to use four paranoia scarabs one mania beyond on the map device the altars of your choosing and then we're going to go and as i say these maps the intention is to go very fast not slowing down for random mechanics clicking altars clicking boxes killing mobs and then getting the big like, loot tile uh, rewards at the end so it's not going to be a ton of juice in the map you're not going to be dropping divines and divines um maybe at the end of the map you'll drop divines but certainly early on it's not going to be uh you know raining divines i had a couple i think today but nothing crazy i missed that altar so you can see we're already up to five reward tiles we've been here for no time it does get progressively harder to increase the amount of delirium on your map uh, that's why i elected not to try and go higher than eight as eight seemed like a nice little sweet spot uh i don't want to take decreased defenses per frenzy charges i would not like to die in a showcase that would be embarrassing everyone would laugh at me so we're just going to keep going yeah, there's really not much to these maps other than killing monsters, which I like killing monsters while I play Path of Exile, so here we go. Hopefully we can get up to 8. There are obviously times when I haven't got up to 8, and that would be doubly embarrassing for the video, but I'm pretty sure we can get there. Uh, you don't need a headhunter. Obviously, I have a headhunter. It makes it a bit easier. The map does get a lot harder towards the end of it. We have a boss here. That guy got deleted. Uh, yeah, this one's a good one. Divination card, which rewards basic currency. You will get some good stuff over, out of this over time. If you do enough maps, which, as I said, this is a very fast strategy, you can expect to see good divination cards from it. I'm going to skip the Verisium, um, as we are about to proc that eighth reward. Maybe I need to do the Verisium to get there. Yeah, I'll, I'll maybe click on it. Now nah, we'll get it in the boss room. It is what it is. If I don't get it, then there we go. We got to eight. So that's the that's it. That's the the entire map. That's the goal of the map is to get to eight, tick up to nine. End the delirium and call it there. So we just get ding, 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 ding. Just like that. Pick it all up. Scarabs, delirium orbs, fossils, incubators. Make sure you're using these. 104 splinters, stack decks. You know, you can see all this stuff. It's kind of like the reward tiles we got on the Rogue Exiles. If you tried my Rogue Exile strat. Maps. If you need maps for any reason, you're going to get a lot of those. Very fast. Very fast. Very straightforward. Very cheap scarabs. And this may not seem like much, but it adds up, right? You get this every single map when you're spending as little as we are on each of the maps. And suddenly you've you've got a lot of currency, a divine here, a divine there. We're pumping. You can see here the investment into the maps is very low as these scarabs are pretty cheap, at least at the time of recording. Paranoias go for about 3.5c each in bulk using either the trade house or the currency market. Mania goes for 2.4c each, same. And beyond, obviously, it's five. Now you i don't include map costs i never do keep it consistent what i did was i fused my t17 farming strat as i always do to farm maps and i got more than 50 strand maps in two abominations so that was all the maps i would need for this strategy if you want to include that you can always make a copy of the sheet and add in the cost of the maps and you can see what i would have made if i'd have included that right even if i was uh you know crazy and said it was four divines and we only made 55 54 uh, 45.3 yeah it's really not all that crazy is it but that was the returns 49.3 divines you can see it right here in the wealthy upsell tab this is with like lucky drops uh, excluded uh, so i've taken out the 1.7 divines of lucky drops and all the random miscellaneous stuff you see from maps i've only included the fortress maps that i got which was six uh, and the influence maps because they're the easy to sell we got four divines. All of these came from the end of the map currency explosion. 3.5 divines worth of stacked decks. All the delirium orbs you could ever need. Now, there is about 300 delirium orbs here. They go for 28 to 1 um, divines very easily to sell. Uh, so that's 10 plus divines of delirium orbs. Uh, then we have what? Scarabs are going to be a big one. 
Again, scarabs, it's kind of a thing where you farm them and over time your tab fills up and then you can offload them in bulk using any method of your choosing. And then things like divination cards. I dropped to seven years and the nurse, not included, of course. Uh, but you do get darker halves. If you don't know what darker half is, uh, maybe I can show it. Let's see, darker half. So darker half, one out of three, five times Eldritch Chaos Orb. Eldritch Chaos Orbs are fairly spenny right now. So this is, a, well, I mean, the first five are lower than ATC, but then everything after that is like ATC. So these sell for a decent amount. They're down at 60C here. So again, trying to err on the side of, of uh, not inflated. Um, and then, yeah, it was just like random cards from the altar awards, like Divine Beauties, The Fortunate, Patient, Chaotic Disposition, the kind of stuff you're going to get if you're running blue altars, basically. Kind of standard stuff. So nothing too out of this world crazy that's bumping up this this tally it does say 47 here so let me change that to 47 so i'm not boosting anything maybe the prices have changed since i initially tabbed this week you see i started at 8 p.m 9 p.m 9 p.m and then by 11 p.m i had 51 divines in here so that's the time that's why i have it down as three hours and we made a lovely 13.137 leet divines per hour and this is the result of finding some scarabs that are fairly undervalued and allow and then concocting a strategy around them to get the most out of what they give at least in this sense there are other ways to use these scarabs this is just one of many uh, but yeah i hope this was uh, a cool strat for you to see maybe one that you could try out i will say with this one you probably want to do a, a good chunk of maps i'd say probably 50 like i did it's going to cost you 1070 or 6.9 divines to get started with a strat like this uh, but all in all you want to get bulk with the delirium orbs and stuff like that to make your life easier selling. The less of this you do, the worse it's going to be. So I would say to do a decent amount of these to make it truly, truly good. Uh, but yeah, overperform massively. Um, it's not that um, crazy as well in terms of how difficult it is. Delirium does get harder as the map progresses. But yeah, as long as you're not kicking too many crazy blue altars, you should have no problem getting through, killing the boss, getting nine rewards, picking up the loot and getting out of there. That was today's strap. T16s, still good. Scarabs, still usable. Just have a look around. You'll find them. I'll see you in the next video.